let us begin. So, uh, there is a difference between ordinal numbers and cardinal numbers. Cardinality means size and ordinal number means denotes position in a list. Okay, so, first, second, third, these, no, these English letter words are different than 1, 2, 3, correct? Then 0th is also added for formality, I mean 0 is nothing, so nothing exists and therefore everything exists, old joke, now. So, uh, ordinal numbers denote the position. So, whenever we are listing, so suppose you list all integers, how did we do that? You remember? 0, 1, minus 1, 2, minus 2 and dot dot dot. So, in this particular list, minus 1 is the 0, 1, minus 1, 2, minus 2, dot dot dot, minus 1 is the third. So, you know that in this list, the position matters. Correct? The position of that particular number matters and those are denoted by ordinal numbers whereas if I just say 0, 1, minus 1, 2, minus 2 and then I ask the question how many are there, then the answer is 5. So, how many and which position? These are two different questions. So, the same numbers have different purposes. However, when we go to infinities, then the answer will not be the same. So, the position in an infinite situation is different from the size and that is the difference between ordinal and cardinal numbers which is what our next topics are going to be. So, in order to understand that, let us look at this first definition. What is a linear order, a strict linear order? It is an irreflexive transitive binary relation. Yeah, we have seen that. So, real numbers with respect to strictly less than, that is a, uh, a strict linear order. Natural numbers with respect to less than or with respect to belonging, if you remember. Yes, less than is same as belonging. Then rational numbers, any finite number, finite natural number, yeah, that is also a strict linear order with respect to belonging relationship. Okay. And just to remind you what are von Neumann natural numbers, I mean I am calling them ordinals because we will enlarge this list today. So, 0 which is the empty set is a natural number and if n is a natural number then so is n plus. n plus all of you remember? n plus is n union singleton n and because of axiom of foundation n does not belong to sing does not belong to n and therefore this is a strictly bigger set. So, it is the so called successor of n. Okay, very good. So, now uh, another definition that we will need a strict linear order uh, isomorphism between L1 less than and L2 less than is a function, is a function f from L1 to L2 satisfying x less than y in L1 if and only if fx is less than fy in L2. Is it hard to understand? It is a function which preserves, yeah, so if x is less than y, then fx is less than fy. This is like a homomorphism property. It is a monotone map. It is a strict monotone map. It preserves, uh, but it also reflects. It not only preserves, but it also reflects as in whenever x and y are two elements in L1 and fx is less than fy, then x has to be less than y. Okay, so, preserves and reflects or strict order relation. By the way, I forgot something. 
the first two uh, first two properties here they only define a strict partial order and not a linear order i missed the third property and that third property is trichotomy very good so for all x y z in l yeah if x is not equal to y then either x is less than y or y is less than x yes okay sorry about that so this is a strict linear order isomorphism here sir why are we using the word strict here? because uh, normally what do we do l less equal we also include less e yeah equality in that so in that case irreflexivity is replaced by reflexivity then we have transitivity we also have trichotomy and we have one more condition antisymmetry yeah if x is less equal y and y is less equal x then actually x is equal to y so in that case it will be a weak linear order or just a linear order yeah but here i am uh, purposely writing strict linear order f should be a bijection uh, yes and no f doesn't need to be a bijection because of this condition x any two elements are related so if x is less than y then automatically fx less than fy implies that because of irreflexivity of l2 that fx and fy cannot be the same oh maybe i should say that is a uh, sorry uh, it's not necessarily uh, guaranteed to be surjective it is a bijective function okay it is a bijective function which satisfies this i should have said it is a surjective function it is sufficient but let's keep it a bijective function any other questions okay good so now that we know these things will we want to look at one particular type of strict linear orders a well ordered set which we will abbreviate as wo set okay well ordered set wo set partially ordered set is called a po set yeah so well ordered set is a wo set is a linear order is a strict linear order w less than such that every non empty subset of w has a least element okay least element means it is smaller than any other element in that subset right so uh, for example uh, let me take 2 what is 2 0 and 1 this is a boset with respect to belonging relationship because what are non empty subsets of singleton 0 singleton 1 or to itself singleton 0 has 0 as the least element singleton 1 has 1 as the least element and 0 1 has 0 as the least element because 0 belongs to 1 okay similarly n comma belongs to is a wo set for each n in omega every natural number is a well ordered set yeah if i give you 0 up to 100 and then i give you a non empty subset can you choose the least one yes yeah so that therefore this is true however 0 comma 1 subset of r 
is not a well ordered set can you tell me which subset doesn't have a least element in 0 comma 1 the, the set itself right because if the minimum has to exist then it should be 0 but 0 doesn't belong right so therefore it is not a well ordered set is the set of real numbers well ordered rational numbers integers yes and no yeah no I, integers is not because the whole integers do not have a least element okay so well ordered sets are scarce yeah one more thing note that omega less equal uh, or omega strictly belongs is also a vo set if i give you any non empty set of natural numbers then it contains a least element yeah, you can prove that it's a bit tricky but you should try that yeah that uh, it follows from axiom of foundation or the way we have designed these things okay so this is also a well ordered set so omega is a well ordered set so so far what do we know 0 is well ordered 1 is well ordered 2 is well ordered dot 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 omega is well ordered okay I am also going to give you that suppose x is equal to 1 comma 2 with 1 less than 2 as the relation so this is our less than relationship then is x well ordered then x comma less than is a vo set okay but now comes the interesting thing please look at what we wrote here a strict linear order isomorphism is a bijective map which preserves and reflects orders so can you tell me if x is isomorphic to any other well known linear order something from our list 1 and 2 is in uh, is isomorphic to x is isomorphic to 0 1 right 0 maps to, like from 0 1 so uh, yeah so define f from 2 to x which cons uh, which sends 0 to 1 and 1 to 2 so that f is a strict linear order isomorphism right so every in fact every finite well order is isomorphic to the uh, the unique natural number which is its size right so every finite uh, well ordered set w less than with size n is isomorphic to n comma belongs do you agree with this you understand how to do it if i am given a well ordered set then i will choose the least element yeah by property of a well ordered set the least element exists i will send that least element to zero then i will remove that and accordingly i will also remove zero from the other side and then i will again ask what is the least element i will send that to one and then again remove that what is the least element and i continue this procedure i will get an isomorphism isomorphism is simply renaming correct so every finite linear uh, finite well ordered set is isomorphic to n comma belongs to yeah belongs to is the order relation there 
Any questions so far? <coughs> size n, yes, yes. I mean, we know that what is the meaning of finite set? That it is in bijection with some n. But here I am not choosing an arbitrary bijection. I want that bijection to preserve and reflect the order relation also. Yeah, so we want that bijection to do something more. <coughs> Understood this? Um, sir, yes. Varial numbers are not a well ordered set. Okay, if real numbers are a well ordered set, then there should exist a minimum element in real numbers. Does there exist a minimum? Like smallest element? No. Integers also don't have it. Yeah? Closed interval 0, 1, does there exist, uh, like is it a well ordered set? Yes. yes. No. See, closed interval 0, 1 contains open 0, 1. And open 0, 1 doesn't have a least element. Understood? No continuous interval. Yes, no non empty interval can be well ordered. What is the meaning of continuous set? I did not want to say that. That's why I said non empty interval, which, which contains at least two elements. Yeah, that cannot be a well ordered set. Any other questions? So, now loosely speaking, yeah, very loosely speaking, the isomorphism classes of well ordered sets are called ordinals. Okay, let me repeat. The isomorphism classes of well ordered sets are called ordinals. Now, recall what is cardinality? Equinumerosity classes of sets, they are called cardinal numbers. However, there is a problem, yeah? Equinumerosity class, so it's a proper class, we don't want to deal with that. And similarly, the isomorphism classes of well ordered sets, they will form a proper class and therefore we don't want to deal with them either. So, whenever we have a problem with classes, then we simply choose a representative. Understood? We have a partition of the entire thing. So, I mean, I am just going to write an ordinal and this is a an informal definition. I will make it more precise. An ordinal is an isomorphism class of well orders, well ordered sets. Yeah, this is not a definition. So, maybe, yeah, this is the collection of all well, well ordered sets and then up to isomorphism I partition them like this. <coughs> Our job is now to find one particular well order from each class and we'll call that an ordinal instead. Okay, similar to bijection. So, bijection equivalence classes of finite sets, what do they contain specifically? Finite sets? Natural. One natural number, a unique natural number and then we say that that unique natural number is the cardinality of our set. Similarly, every isomorphism class of well ordered sets will contain a unique nice set, nice well ordered set. So, for, uh, so what can we say? Yeah, if W less than is a finite Vo set, then the ordinal isomorphic to it is n comma belongs to for some n. 
Yeah, we just saw that. Every finite well-ordered set is isomorphic to n, belongs to for some natural number. I mean, which natural number? It is precisely the size. How many elements are there in it? So, similarly, now we want to do this for infinite linear orders as well. Infinite well-orders. And then we will define our set to be something. Okay, so now I am going to define a new concept and that is called a transitive set. So, a set X is said to be transitive if for all y in x, y is also a subset of x. Very confusing, right? Belongs to subset. I will rewrite it equivalently. And I will give you a motivation why it is called transitive. So, for all y in x and for all z in y, z also belongs to x. <coughs> now, does that give you a feel of transitivity? z belongs to y, y belongs to x, therefore z belongs to x. Yeah, that is precisely the statement. If y is an element of x, then y is also a subset of x. Yeah, what is the meaning of subset? That every element of y is also an element of x. So, therefore, these two are same. So, some examples. empty set, obviously, all the nice properties are true of empty sets, then 1, 1 is transitive, correct, 2, 2 is transitive, it contains 0 and 1, but it also contains the element of no, 0 does not have any element, one. but 1 has an element, so it contains element of 1 as well. In general, n, n is transit, uh, transitive as well. Yeah, because something belongs to n means it is less than. Then, if some, uh, so let us say m belongs to n. Then, if k belongs to m, then k is less than m, then by transitivity, k is less than m, m is less than n, so k is less than n. So, therefore, every n is also a transitive set. Okay, good. So, what about omega? Omega is transitive or not? It is. Yeah, you choose any element of omega, what is it? It is a natural number and what is an element of natural numbers? Natural. Another natural number, so that is also there. So, it is also transitive set. But this is not all, yeah, we can add a few more. Yeah, so for, for example, consider this, something which contains 0, something and singleton 0 which is 1 and singleton singleton 0. <coughs> now, observe this, yeah, this is transitive because it contains all elements of this which is namely this, it contains all elements of this also because one element is here and then its element is this. So, this is also transitive. So, all of them are transitive sets. Now, not all of transitive sets are well orders with respect to belonging relationship, membership relation. Yeah. So, 
note not all transitive sets are wo sets with respect to membership relation i mean what is a contradiction uh, what, what is a counter example to this first and the third one yes in this particular set if i choose zero and singleton singleton zero then it is a non empty subset but does it have a least element yeah i mean let me call this uh, call this w okay so zero comma singleton singleton zero subset of w and this is a non empty subset doesn't have a least element because what is the problem if it is supposed to have a least element then yeah because other uh, because zero is not an element of singleton singleton zero understood so therefore transitivity is an independent property being well ordered with respect to membership relation is an independent property right because we found an example okay so and there are many more well ordered sets so for example consider this yeah this x is equal to 1 comma 2 this is a well ordered set but it is not transitive is it transitive what is the meaning of being transitive that if you choose any element then its element should also be there so i chose 1 but the element of 1 is 0 and 0 is not present in this set so this x is not transitive it is a well ordered set but it is not transitive so there are some well ordered sets which are not transitive there are some transitive sets which are not well ordered with respect to membership relation but what we are interested in is an ordinal is a well ordered set w comma belongs to that is also transitive now this is the real definition of an ordinal it is a well ordered set that is also transitive so do you know any ordinal numbers 0 1 2 3 <coughs> omega yeah omega is also transitive it is also well ordered set so you know many examples these are called von neumann see f f not v von neumann uh, ordinals okay so i am just going to write down a few few von neumann ordinals yeah Zero, one, two. All of you are okay with this, right? Then omega. Omega is also transitive and well ordered set. What about omega plus one, which is defined to be omega plus? Yeah, it takes some time to prove this. We'll do that in a moment. But yes, omega plus one is also an ordinal. omega plus 2 which is omega plus plus 
is also an ordinal and whenever you say dot 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 then ultimately omega plus omega which is also uh, which is defined to be omega dot 2 is also an ordinal then well I should not stop at omega dot 2 its plus is also an ordinal so means I can add 1 I can add 2 then I can go up to omega dot 3 which is omega plus omega plus omega and do not stop there omega dot 4 omega dot 5 and dot 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 omega dot omega which we write as omega square then omega square plus 1 yeah again add 1 add omega continue so ultimately you will have omega square plus omega then omega square dot 2 and omega cube and you continue like that then you will have omega to the power n for any n then you will have omega to the power omega right then eventually you will also have omega to the power omega to the power omega and if I continue like that then I will have epsilon naught which is defined to be omega to the power omega to the power omega to the power omega and dot 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 it never ends yeah so it is the smallest solution of epsilon naught is the smallest solution of the equation omega to the x is equal to x right this is an infinite tower so that infinite tower is solution its own omega th power also then again I can do epsilon naught plus 1 and continue I will have epsilon 1 at some point I am not going to define what that is and eventually uh, yeah ok one more thing these are all sets yeah these are all sets and not only that these are all countably infinite sets after yeah I mean after finishing finite linear orders these are all countably infinite sets omega is countably infinite omega plus 1 is countably infinite you are adding just one more element right all of them are countably infinite even epsilon naught is countably infinite so it is a small ordinal it looks really big but it is a small ordinal but ultimately you will run out of countably infinite ordinals can you give me a reason why that will run out of countably infinite ordinals and if we want to continue with the process then we have to hit something uncountable Finite ordinals at some point. Okay, uh, what is that reason? Why do we run out of finite ordinals at some point? You can't have a set that contains all. No, I, I want more formal reason. So we are uh, we are talking about all of them being well ordered sets which are countably infinite. So up to isomorphism, I am defining different well orders on natural numbers itself if all of them are countable then I am defining well orders on natural numbers it is a different ordering yeah for example this omega plus 1 what is that ordering well this ordering is 1 less than 2 less than 3 less than dot 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 and 0 sits at the top that is the ordering on natural numbers which gives me omega plus 1 if I want to talk about omega plus omega then actually I am talking about 1 less than 3 less than 5 less than dot 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 and all even numbers are less sitting at top of them. So I am just making different arrangements of natural numbers. You understand that? That is a copy of omega 1 3 5 that is a countably infinite set it is a copy of omega followed by another copy of omega 2 4 6 I mean sorry 0 I should write 0 somewhere and yeah 0 2 4 6 and dot 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 so 
इट्स अ कॉपी ऑफ ओमेगा फॉलोड बाय कॉपी ऑफ ओमेगा दैट्स वाई ओमेगा प्लस ओमेगा सो दीज आर ऑल वेल ऑर्डर ऑन द सेट ऑफ नेचुरल नंबर्स एंड हाउ मेनी वेल ऑर्डर ऑन द सेट ऑफ नेचुरल नंबर्स कैन देर बी the size of the size of strictly less than the size of uh, set of functions from n to n yes strictly less than the size of uh, not set of functions from n to n but the binary relations however many binary relations i can define on natural numbers which is power set of n cross n power set of n cross n is my boundary i cannot go beyond that understood okay so that's the reason that eventually we will run out of countably infinite ordinals and then finally we will hit omega 1 this is the first uncountable ordinal uh then again i can do omega 1 plus 1 and omega 1 plus omega and dot 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 and omega 1 dot 2 and everything will continue then eventually we will have omega 2 omega 2 is the or ordinal it is the first ordinal which is not in bijection with omega 1 right so we started with omega that was our first countably infinite ordinal but eventually we ran out of all such things so therefore we hit omega 1 which was not in bijection so everything in between yeah i mean i am going to use a green color everything here in this green bracket is countably infinite which means it is in bijection with omega <coughs> then everything in this interval is in bijection with power set of n oh, no not power set of n just omega 1 it is in bijection with omega 1 then we will have omega 2 and well after omega 2 you can guess what it will be omega 3 then we will have omega sub omega eventually then we will have omega sub omega plus 1 then we'll have omega sub <laughs> omega dot omega epsilon not then eventually we'll also have omega sub omega 1 and yeah you can make a joke out of it it never finish ends okay so this is the beauty this these are all different infinities okay i promise to you that there will be A, a gradation of infinities omega represents an infinity which is smaller than omega 1 omega 1 is smaller than omega 2 so omega sub alpha is less than uh, omega sub beta if alpha is less than beta and you can imagine this is yeah a hard thing to understand we have already studied the sizes yeah for example natural numbers and real numbers natural numbers can be embedded inside real numbers but real numbers are far more than natural numbers so even for size comparisons these are different you understand so every set is strictly smaller in size compared to its power set cantor's theorem the first theorem that we saw in this course so this process actually never ends and now what i have given you are only a few von neumann ordinals yeah i haven't listed them all yeah they they all can be studied properly they have some uh, nice properties we will see how to add how to multiply and how to exponentiate these ordinals 
but you understand the procedure here what is happening now uh, even if you say you do you don't really do right now yeah because i haven't told you how to obtain the next one so for example if i am given zero how do i obtain the next ordinal zero plus very good so that's a successor ordinal so every ordinal is of one of the three types okay so ordinals are of one of the three types okay the first one is something i am going to leave it second one is successor ordinals so they they look like alpha plus for some alpha then there are some ordinals which are like omega omega is not a successor of anything omega doesn't have an immediate predecessor so those such ordinals are called as limit ordinals so these are not successors and what is number 1 yeah zero is not termed as limit or successor some people will say that it is a limit ordinal yeah because it does satisfy it's not a successor of anything yeah but i would like to distinguish between these three things so what's our job yeah we still have some time so let us prove our first result about ordinals if alpha is an ordinal then also we will always use greek letters alpha beta delta gamma for denoting ordinal numbers if alpha is an ordinal then so is alpha plus this is our first result about ordinals so what do we need to prove to show that alpha plus is an ordinal yeah. alpha plus is a voset with respect to yeah uh and second thing so alpha plus belongs to is a voset this is the first thing we'll say and the second part is that it is transitive okay good so alpha plus belongs to is a voset i'm sure you can tell me the proof so let uh s be a non empty subset of alpha plus which is what alpha union singleton alpha okay so if <coughs> alpha intersection s is empty okay so s can intersect alpha or not if alpha intersection s is empty then what will happen then what is s no 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 then it has to be the only element possible it is singleton alpha and alpha is the least element in s yeah because there is only one so there is nothing to prove here on the other hand otherwise alpha intersection s is non empty in that case what will happen it is a subset of alpha yeah then alpha intersection s is a subset of alpha and alpha is well ordered so therefore 
minimum of alpha intersection S, yeah, the least <coughs> element, will exist for alpha and yeah, I mean as a subset of alpha, this has a least element. Now, even if S contains alpha as an element, yeah, because we are just talking about alpha intersection S, but the only other element is alpha itself in alpha plus. Even if S contains alpha, this minimum is also going to be smaller than that. Correct? So, therefore, minimum of alpha intersection S is also equal to minimum of S. Yeah, I mean, I am just saying argue that. So, therefore, we are done proving that alpha plus with respect to membership relation is a well-ordered set. It was easy. Yeah. Second property that we need to prove that alpha plus is a transitive set. So, suppose beta is an element of alpha plus, <coughs> suppose beta is an element of alpha plus, then what can be the options for beta? <coughs> either beta is, if either beta is an element of alpha or beta itself is equal to alpha. Those are the only possibilities. Yeah? So either then either beta belongs to alpha or beta belongs to singleton alpha, which means i.e. beta is equal to alpha. So these are the only two possibilities. Now what happens if beta belongs to alpha? If beta belongs to alpha, then beta is a subset of alpha. Since alpha is transitive, moreover, alpha is itself a subset of alpha plus. So, therefore, beta is a subset of alpha plus. That is what we needed. Right? Okay. Now, if beta is equal to alpha, then beta is automatically a subset of alpha plus. So, we are done. The proof is complete. So, what did we show so far? That successors of ordinals are again ordinals. <coughs> Next time, yeah, which will be in a next Wednesday, we will start with this proof. Yeah, so, uh, if S is a non-empty subset, oh, maybe I, I should uh, use this time to prove some, uh, define something else. Denote by O n, capital O n, ordinal numbers, the class of all ordinals. Now, O n is the notation. In next lecture, we will prove that O n is in fact a proper class. Yeah, it is not a set. And uh, another theorem that we will prove If S is a subset of O n, what is the meaning of subset of a class? It is a set and it is contained, right? If S is a subset of O n, then union of S is also an ordinal.
Okay, why this is important? Because see, what is omega? Omega is the union of everything that we took so far. 0, 1, 2, 3, dot, dot, dot. What is omega plus omega? It is union of 0, 1, 2, 3, then omega, omega plus 1 and dot, dot, dot. So that's the other way of generating ordinals. We start with 0, then we can do successors and we can do unions of sets of ordinals. Okay, let's end it here.